So welcome to today's webinar. Um, before we get started, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, um, just type them in the Q&A box and we'll answer some at the end. Our agency manager, Marcel, will also be following up any unanswered questions um, later on. So keep an eye on your inbox. Okay, so let's get stuck into it. Uh, my name is Jess and I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Vision 6. For those of you who are new to this series, um, Vision 6 is Australia's most trusted email and SMS marketing platform, and we're a preferred partner for Australian agencies. So I have the wonderful job of creating a knowledge hub for our agencies, and I'm also an agency client. So I really get to experience both sides of the agency world. I was hearing a lot of the challenges agencies are facing during COVID-19, trying to retain clients that are barely staying afloat themselves, reduction in client spend, and acquiring new clients are all things many of you guys have in common. But as a marketer myself, going through an agency selection process during a global pandemic, I saw a huge opportunity for agencies to pivot their way of thinking and ultimately the way clients value them. So what I really wanna talk about today is how we can change the perception of your agency from a luxury to a necessity. And we want to encourage everyone listening today to not let our perception of events cloud our judgment. LinkedIn and Microsoft were both founded during times of economic crisis. So we're going to look for the opportunity within a crisis. So regardless of client type, hiring or continuing to hire a marketing agency is seen as a luxury by businesses even before COVID-19. One of the biggest pain points we heard from agencies was retaining clients and justifying value. So add a global pandemic on top and a possible recession. And that pain point really turns into a life or death situation for your agency. And what we've seen over the past few weeks is most companies trying to trim the fat wherever possible. There has been approximately 814,000 job losses just in Australia. So it's safe to assume businesses will be laying off agencies before essential staff. And that term essential is really interesting here because it's really based on perception of value. How much value are you giving to your clients in their time of need? When we continue business as usual with client work, we're a luxury. But when we proactively offer value during times of need, we're essential. So our expert knowledge as agencies becomes really essential to their business staying alive. So I know this kind of thing is always a lot easier said than done. And if we could do it, we would do it. So let's talk about some practical, realistic ways that we can change that perception. First and foremost, it all starts with a change of mindset. At the moment, we're all really focused on the financial survival of our own companies it's easy to lose focus on why clients hire us in the first place. Some of the worst things your agency can do right now is take a back seat and continue business as usual with your clients or price gouge your services to potential new clients to keep a steady revenue stream. So what we need to remember is ultimately your client's survival is your agency's survival. So the first step is to be proactive. Reach out to them before they come to you whether you have two clients or you have 50 clients. Just pick up the phone or send an email and check in. Ask how they're doing, ask what their challenges are, and your questions don't have to be marketing or advertising specific. As an agency, you have a broad range of experience and expert knowledge that you can pass down to your clients. So let them know what they should or shouldn't be doing. The purpose of this exercise is twofold. You want to gain an understanding of their pain points so you can help solve them. And you want to position yourself as a partner who's going to help them thrive during this time and long after it's over. So your call should provide comfort and reassurance to them. You're not just taking some weight off their shoulders, but you're proving your value in your partnership by taking on an advisory role. So after this session, we are going to share a set of questions and an email template that you can modify to suit your needs and then send on to your clients. 
So the quote, willing acceptance now at this very moment of all external events has been used as the framework for the most iconic and robust entrepreneurs of all time, like Rockefeller, Edison, Steve Jobs, when obstacles confronted them. To them, the obstacle was the path to greater success. So a global crisis may feel like a crater of an obstacle, but there's a huge silver lining for brands. It becomes really easy to determine the gaps and opportunities within the market. We have far greater visibility into industries and customer segments that are thriving and ripe for picking versus those that are struggling and may not rebound for a while. A little research into employment rates will show what industries are hiring during the crisis. The industries that are hiring the most will have the most money to spend. And those that are pulling back are obviously on Struggle Street. Your client could then identify their largest or most lucrative segments and compare them to the list of industry sectors. If there's a match, channel all your efforts into targeting that market. If there's not a match, it could be the perfect time to pivot your strategy and attract a new customer segment. Likewise, you can use this opportunity to revisit your campaigns and promote your services to meet changing consumer needs. Vision 6 is an email and SMS marketing platform. So we service a B2B customer base made up of agencies and internal marketers. And email marketing is a tool that can be used by every single business out there. So our advertising audience can be really tricky to narrow down. We did some digging and we found a list of Australian industries that were hiring the highest amount of staff. We narrowed that list down to those companies that fit our ideal customer profile. And we started an advertising campaign specifically targeting them on Google ads, LinkedIn, and Facebook. We packaged our product up in a way that would be most useful to them. And voila, we gained new customer segments. Another strategy is changing the ad message and using short-term price incentives to match the economic climate with customers who are chasing a good deal. Some brands will promote interest-free loans, discounts, or special promotions to boost sales and boost market share. When the economy bounces back, they go back to regular pricing. For some brands that don't give cost incentives, they can change their ad message to focus on solving the job the customer is trying to do, pointing out the value that the brand provides. When the market does come back, you may also be recognized by your existing customers by how you handle the challenge facing them. If you are in a position to do so, offering something of value for free will not only build loyalty with your existing customers, but it will likely create that goodwill where they feel compelled to refer your business. Ideally, you would be doing things that you might not otherwise do, either for free or at charge. And some examples are running a webinar, creating a white paper on bouncing back, providing one of your services at a lower rate or for free for a period of time, or addressing some other pain point that your customers would value in a low to no cost way. What your customers shouldn't be doing uh, is contracting spend. So it's a very natural instinct in times of economic recession, but one of, if not the worst thing your clients can do in a crisis is cut back on advertising and marketing spend. As a recession looms, you'll find two types of clients. The first sees the decline in sales demand as a signal to cut advertising budgets and save money. They halt all new marketing initiatives and wait for the skies to clear. The second is the client who pumps more money into their ads. They go hard at new marketing initiatives and they focus on the long-term brand success. So if you want your agency to be as successful as possible, you want all of your clients to be example number two. You want to push for more advertising spend because branding is a long-term game. It needs to be consistent. And more than likely, their competitors fall into example number one and are cutting back on their share of voice. One of the biggest drivers of sales is a brand share of voice. The more a brand spends on advertising versus its rivals, the more it's going to grow. It's also a good PR exercise because the harder your customers market during these times implies they have corporate stability. Brands and businesses that reduce their spends during time of recession often come out at the other side, finding it harder to recover. 
History tells us on average, marketing budget should be protected and not rated for recovery. And there are a number of examples of brands that have benefited by maintaining their ad budgets during an economic downturn. So let's take a look at some industries and some examples. So the dry cereal category. In the 1920s, Post was the leader in ready to eat cereal category. During the Great Depression, Post cut back significantly its advertising budget and rival Kellogg doubled its advertising spend investing heavily in radio and introducing a new cereal called Rice Krispies, featuring Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Kellogg's profits grew by 30% and the company became the category leader, a position it has maintained for decades. Another example is imported cars. So in the 17 month recession of 1973 to 75 was triggered by the energy crisis. In late 73, the government issued its first miles per gallon report in which Toyota Corolla was second to Honda Civic in fuel efficiency. Since Toyota was experiencing strong sales, when the economic downturn hit, the temptation was to drop their ad budget, which they resisted. So by sticking to its long-term strategy, Toyota surpassed Volkswagen as the top imported car maker in the US by 1976. Fast food restaurants. In the 1990 to 91 recession, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell took advantage of McDonald's decision to drop its advertising and promotion budget. As a result, Pizza Hut increased sales by 61% and Taco Bell sales grew by 40%. McDonald's sales declined by 28%. What a McBummer. Technology. Amazon sales grew by 28% in 2009 during the Great Recession. The brand continued to innovate with new products during the slogging economy, most notably with the new Kindle products, which helped grow market share. In a first on December, uh, Christmas Day, December 2009, Amazon customers bought more ebooks than printed books. As a result, in the mind of customers, Amazon became an innovative company by introducing a low cost alternative to cash strapped customers. So although the natural inclination for your clients is to cut back on advertising during a possible recession, those brands that maintain their ad budget and change their messaging can get long lasting boost in sales and market share. So everybody wins. Another thing your agency should do is make the most of your downtime if you have it. Now's a good time to research and scope the things you've always wanted to do for your agency. Do some of the things you don't normally have time to do to maximize the health of your business after the crisis ends. When a busy period slows down, the marketing team at Vision 6 gets stuck into the really important tasks that we don't always have time to do, like writing content. Content is an ideal task during downtime. It doesn't need to be something that's immediately relevant to your current environment either. Hone in on your client's pain points and create evergreen content specific to solving their problems. You can turn that into a gated white paper and use it for lead generation purposes to build pipelines. A neat trick to gain SE, extra SEO power is to write a piece of content that's keyword heavy and then turn it into a video, posting the video and transcript on both YouTube and your website. Another thing we do is take a second look at our tech stack and identify the tools that we either don't really use or no longer need, and then we see where we can save some money. Tools like G2 Track are super helpful for tracking and managing spend on your tech stack, and they notify you when renewals are approaching, so that's super helpful. Another great use of time is to enroll in some training to fill your skill gaps. So I recently identified some gaps in our content marketing and took a quick course on YouTube and video marketing to improve our content marketing stack, while some other people in our marketing team improved their SEO knowledge. Um, Udemy is a great place to find fast and inexpensive courses to put your team in the best position possible. So this brings us to the close to the end of our webinar, um, but we're going to answer a few questions before we leave. So our campaign manager, Kath, has been taking down all of your questions. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to her to ask them for you. Thanks, Jess. Um, so our first question is, 
how do you keep your teams in sync and your creative juices flowing while working from home? Well, that's a good question. Um, we're going to be sending out some resources on this very topic following the webinar. Um, but my top five tips would be to keep a steady routine, get dressed in the morning as if you were going to work. Um, I get so dressed to the point of putting on my shoes um, to go into my home office. So that's a good tip. Um, keeping a tidy and separate workspace from your living space. Um, that's going to help your mind separate work time from relaxation time. Uh, invest in proper technology and a strong internet connection. There is nothing worse than spending the first 10 minutes of a 30 minute meeting waiting for, you know, Jill from HR uh, to figure out how to unmute herself. So strong internet and know how to use your technology. Um, another thing we do is book 15 minute standups with our team twice a day. If you have one in the morning, you can discuss what you're working on and then one in the afternoon to share your progress. And it also helps with the loneliness that starts to settle in uh, after not seeing humans for a while. Um, lastly, I would say spend quality time with your team. We recently did a company wide Zoom happy hour. Um, and we got to chat and play games. And I think a lot of us actually looked forward to coming back to work and seeing our work family. So making sure that you're communicating not just about work um, is super important for being happy. And that's it. Cool. Um, next question. What is your top three essential tech to add or have on your marketing tech stack? So most companies that just have the standard website, email, social media platforms, and possibly some form of paid advertising. And that's a good start. Um, but to take your brand to the next level, what you really need to invest in is obviously Google Analytics to track your website visitors and any events that you want to capture like content download. Um, the next would be a share of voice tool. So we use Awario at the moment. There's a lot of ridiculously expensive tools on the market. So if you are looking for a share of voice tool, make sure you do your research. Um, Awario is probably the least inex uh, inexpensive, but has the best features. So we use it to set benchmarks for our organic and social share of voice um, and set goals against our competitors. And without a proper tool, it's a really manual process. Um, and share of voice is super important, as we mentioned earlier, because it directly impacts your bottom line. Uh, an attribution software, that's super important in really refining your campaign touch points and finding the holes in the leaky bucket. You're able to get a visual representation of the entire customer journey, and you can easily see which channels are most effective and measure ROI. So those would be the main, the main tools that I think everyone needs in their tech stack. Next question, um, from an agency client perspective, what do you think client wants to hear most in times like this? So I always say, if you have nothing valuable to add, don't add anything. The market is overrun with people and brands trying to tell you what to do, you know, stay home, wash your hands, and people are becoming sensitive to that. So avoid sending communications about, say, COVID, purely for the reason that everyone else is, so we should. Your know, customers want you to swoop in and save them. They want you to tell them that it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world and that you have their back. They just want to feel comforted. Um, so that's what I would say. Um, awesome. So our next question is, is it more important to run upper funnel campaigns or focus on retention instead? I would say both. Um, the seeds of churn are planted early. So if your agency does have downtime, you can spend it refining your full customer journey. Make sure the customer is getting value at every single touch point. Really get to understand their pain points and do your best to solve them at the onset and throughout your relationship. And you kind of kill two birds with one stone with that approach. Cool. Um, we have time for one last question. Can you share or recommend a list of courses for upskilling? Yeah, so our marketing team primarily uses Udemy. Um, they're quick and inexpensive courses and they're easily digestible. Um, LinkedIn has some great course content and I recently did a HubSpot Academy course on customer onboarding. Um, so those are the, what is that, three um, platforms that, that I use. Um, there's a lot of platforms out there, so I would just recommend doing your research. 
um, and find the one that works best for you. Okay, so I think that's our last question. Um, so to wrap it up, you know, be helpful, be proactive, live and breathe customer centricity. Economic downturns and crises happen all the time and they're going to continue to occur over and over again. So take the lessons that you're learning now and set your clients up for success and make the most of the time that you have free. Um, I think attitude and mindset are everything. So be realistic, be positive, and you know everything will pass. So our agency manager, Marcel, is going to be sending you guys some resources from the webinar. Um, so as we mentioned, we'll be providing you with some questions that you can send to your clients and an email template that you can tailor to your needs. Um, we're also gonna be sending you some written content pieces um, that are a little bit more in depth on some of the topics that we talked about today. Um, yeah, so keep an eye on your inbox and thanks for joining. Um, we'll, we'll chat soon.